Hello dear running friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Frederick Zillen and I'm a running technique specialist. And this episode is about... Is this runner leaning forward? Or is his hip just too far back? Maybe he needs to straighten up a bit. Or what do you think? Is it a good idea to say you need to straighten your body to this runner? Probably not, because when you say that it's very common for this to happen. When it looks like this, it's not uncommon for runners to get the instruction like move your hip forward, which is quite a good idea when it looks like this, or maybe something about needing them to straighten their body because they are running in a slightly seated position. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with those instructions. It is quite correct that it is better for the body to be more in a straight line than this curved one. So if runners actually do what you ask them to do, it is a good instruction to just tell them, move your hip forward, try to get a straighter line in your body. But that is rarely the case. If we look at this runner, he has a curved body. The hips are too far back in relation to the shoulders. But when you ask a runner who runs this way to move his hip forward in order to try to straighten his body or to have a tall posture, it will probably look like what I just showed, like this. The runner will try to change the whole body to get out of the seated position. But the problem is not the whole body. If we start from where the chest strap for your heart rate monitor is, if you have one, it is usually here. We see that what is above the heart rate monitor is quite good. This part. It is the part of the body that is under the heart rate monitor that has traveled backwards. And this is the part that has to be moved forward. So the posture end up more like this. The problem is that almost every runner I've met tries to change what's above the chest strap as well. Like this. But if you think instead that it's only the part of the body that is under your heart rate monitor. Whoops! And then it becomes more like this, which is quite good. So what is the problem with having this curved body? One reason is that it becomes very tiring. If you were to carry a pot of water on your head and the pot weighs two to two and a half times your body weight, which is a fairly common load when landing in running for normal recreational runners who run at a 10k in, I don't know, 45 to 60 minutes. If you run faster, the load is probably a bit higher than that. And now imagine that you have this pot of water on your head. It weighs two to two and a half times your body weight. What would you look like if you were walking with this very heavy pot of water on your head? Well, probably like this. But hardly like this. Or like this. Or like this. The difference between carrying the water pot on your head and running is that instead of having two to two and a half times your body weight on your head, the weight comes from below, as we are now talking about the vertical forces that comes from your landing. And remember, you're talking about two and a half times your body weight on one leg thousands of times every time you run. You also know how hard it is to run on a sandy beach. That is because it is soft. When you run like this or this, everything becomes soft and you are stable and stiff as a marshmallow that has been left out in the sun too long. <laughs> 
And we can now compare this to an empty soda can. If you put it on the ground, you can actually stand on it. It can hold your weight. But if you make a small dent on one side, it collapses immediately. Same thing with your running. If you have too many dents in your body, because you have lifted your chest and arch your back or whatever you have done, it becomes a dent in your soda can. Or if you hang forward with your shoulders like this and have your hands a little bit in front of your body, then there's a dent here. And the less dents you have in your can, that is your body, the less likely you are to collapse when you get tired. Let's take an example. Here is a picture for me from a trail race in the summer of 2022. It started with running to the top of a small slalom hill we have here in Stockholm. On the way up the hill, I wondered why all the other runners were running so slow. And when I reached the crest, I was leading by about 10 meters or yards. Oh, this is fun, I thought, and I pushed as fast as I could because I felt so strong and I was leading the race. So despite being a coach and having run so many races before, I made the classic mistake of running too fast in the beginning and then hitting the wall. I could barely maintain enough speed to run in a straight line. This picture is maybe 80 meters yards from the finish line and you can see that I'm not very happy. Classic rookie mistake. but. I have a very, very good posture. And this despite the fact that I have hit the ball and I am completely exhausted. My body has not collapsed and given me a bad posture. Some people who have seen this picture have said, oh, it must be because you have done so much weight training so that you can maintain the good posture even when you're tired. Well, sure, I work out a lot at the gym, but the reason I have this posture is mainly because I didn't have any dents in my soda can from the start. If you have the body in a good position, you don't need so much force to maintain that posture. All parts are stacked on top of each other. No dents in the soda can. All you have to do is move the part of your body that is under the strap of the heart rate monitor to stack the parts on top of each other and remove all the dents in your soda can, whatever they are and what they look like. Because then you also can look like all these runners with very good soda can bodies. Because then you will be much more energy efficient and at the same time you will get better pictures of your running for social media. That's it for today. Run like a soda can and I'll see you again in another video. I really hope you liked that video and if you did you please click the like button and maybe also the subscribe button so you don't miss any more videos here on my channel. And if you are interested in my online course, you find all the information about that one in the description below.